You can now follow me on all my social media platforms to find out who my latest guest will be. And don't forget to click the subscribe button and the notifications button so you're notified for when my next podcast goes live. This is self-confidence thing. I just thought, I'm just a chubby middle-aged car salesman like with a mockney accent who's gonna, gonna want to listen to me but i'm not a gangster i'm not a drug dealer i didn't know the craze but maybe my story is a little bit more relatable to an 18 year old kid who doesn't know what to do with his life do you know what i mean and i did have this thing like james like i don't i want to do you justice you're smashing it at the moment you've had some heavy hitters on so i used to do like little videos myself you know thinking i was funny you know little skits little bit of jokes about road rage you know like so ginger cabbie now and um you know dapper laughs you know they're still doing all that banter mm. and that's how it started and i cringed to think of my username back then but it was lenny the geezer that's what it was <laughs> at lenny the geezer Oh, sends a shiver down my spine when I think about it now, but I can't hate it because it got me to, it got the most of my yeah. followers, you know? You know, I said earlier to you, um, if if Instagram and my following and everything just ended tomorrow, I'd still have all the important things in life. My wife, my house, my dog. Um, I'd still have work. It might be a little bit more difficult because we sell so many cars through social media. Um, but I'd still have all those important things and, and, and love of my wife and happiness. So yeah. that is, you know, that is a blessed life. I've driven everything. I've driven a LaFerrari, which is two million quid, um, or about three million quid now. Um, Pagani Huera, Huera. See, so even I do it. Pagani Huera. Um, yeah, drove that round the corner. That's a 3.5 million pound car. And it's incredible, you know? When I was Lenny the geezer and I was doing these funny videos and I was being a little bit more out there and obnoxious and stuff i did get a few trolls and people not like me and stuff like that but you should expect that do you know what i mean i've changed it now to lenny.urban it's more about the cars and it's more professional because i thought look no one's gonna buy a 250 grand car for you if you're acting like a clown on social media do you know what i mean so i had to evolve i had to change it i'm happy for what i did because it got me to where i am now but i had to evolve and, and turn it into something a little bit more professional Boom, we're on. Straight in. Yeah, Literally straight, straight in, mate. You've oh, just had a good one. On straight away. <laughs> Lenny, boy. It's good to have you on the show. Thank Lenny you for having me, mate. Yes. It's um, the man with the white van, kind of luxury car dealer. You're known all over the UK now with selling the biggest and most expensive cars around. Yeah. It's, um, I suppose, yeah, white van man to luxury car salesman with the help of social media. And, you know, without social media, I wouldn't be, wouldn't be at the job I'm in now. Wouldn't be here meeting you today. I wouldn't have the nice things that I've got mm -hmm. using social media um, in the right way, and you know it's a powerful tool if used correctly. So, yeah, yeah, I think it's good. It's good. I've done. I've done all right with the use of Instagram and social media. We've just pulled it up outside, outside there in the Lamborghini. Yeah, white. Yeah, for anybody to match that my teeth. Yeah, <laughs> same. Mate. For anybody that loves their cars, as um, this is a podcast for them. But then again, you've got a great backstory from coming from fuck all basically to yeah. then being like the contacts you've got on your Instagram you see the photos with all these big names as well like, yeah. the contact list is powerful just like myself you know your um, your network is your net worth isn't it you yeah. know and that's and that's the thing I mean I'm very I, I do say quite a bit you know we were just talking about you know struggling with confidence and stuff like that and I you know I always say that I'm lucky but then I think well no I have worked hard for this whether it be building up my social media meeting the right people you know networking with the right people and you know I think if you're into cars, if you're into cars and you're in the UK, and you know I've got a lot of American followers as well, a lot of Australian followers. Um, but if you're into cars and modified cars, luxury cars, chances are you'll probably know who I am. Whether you like me or follow me, I don't know, but you'll know who I am, especially in the in the UK. I always go back to the start with my guest brother, get a bit more information about yourself because we spoke earlier and we we're talking about you used to do a lot of Vine videos and you kept saying like yeah. people might not like you this and that, but. You're following strong. People yeah. will show you a lot of love and support. I think there's a bit of self-doubt there mm. that everyone has. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But let's go right back to the right start, back brother. To start. Where so you grew up and how it all began. Nothing too exciting, really. I mean, you know, I'm a fan of yours. I listen to a lot of your podcasts and I hear people and, you know, talking about their tough upbringing and stuff. But I had a lovely childhood. Very, very fortunate. Very lucky. Didn't have much money. Um, grew up in a, a small town called Sandy in Bedfordshire, which is about an hour north of London. Um, very lucky that my mum and dad are still together, still happy. I've got a older sister who's 18 months older than me um 
like I say, didn't have much money, but we never went without. Do you know what I mean? Like, we, I never had like new designer clothes and stuff like that. And when I say designer, I don't mean like Stone Island, Valentino, Gucci. I mean Nike, Reebok, stuff like that. I was never the kid that had the brand new jacket at the you know term. Never had um, you know beach holidays. First time I got on a plane was coming up here, twenty two years old. Never had you know foreign holidays. We always went camping. Um, so my mum and dad, they did very very well bringing us up we were happy children but we didn't have a lot do you know what i mean very you know nice but nice childhood i'm very lucky like i think the main thing is is just having your parents there and both parents there and, and happy you know i'm very fortunate with that very fortunate with that. yeah that takes a lot especially a lot of people i come from come from speak to a lot of backgrounds who come from broken homes yeah, and you tend yeah. to see that that really affects people as 100%. kids and that's what i mean when i say that you know we didn't have much you know didn't have much money growing up we were happy kids you know even we were just going camping down in somerset i was happy you know i was in the you know the lakes fishing and on the bmx and you know that and that's a that's a blessed childhood if you're if you're happy do you know what i mean and that's you know um so yeah got a really good relationship with my mum and dad very lucky to have them but yeah um average in school like wasn't really into school at all um left school at 16 my sister was a straight a student but i just didn't get it i was good at I was good at the the classes that I enjoyed, like graphic design, art, PE. You know, I got like an A for graphic design, B for art. All the rest were D's and E's. So I left school at sixteen, didn't do any further education, um, and yeah, just got straight into warehouse jobs, white van man. You know, just just trying to scratch about a bit of bit of money. Um, you know, a lot of my mates were roofers, brickies, builders. You know, they'd seventeen, eighteen years old. As soon as they got their wages, they'd drink it down the pub where I was the first one you know in a small town to have a nice car or they um the people who were into cars will know this series 2 Escort RS Turbo so I had one of those at 19 and I saved up save 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 because back then you didn't have like yeah. car finance and stuff like that um so I always liked nice things always liked nice things but you know my mum and dad did instill to me that you have to work hard for them no one's going to give anything to you and you know the the small things that I have now you know everything I've got I've done it myself, you know, and I did back then as well. You know, my mum and dad never gave me any money for like cars or anything like that. Um, even just, you know, this sort of stuff, just, you know, everything I've done, I've done myself. And there is a, a pride in that, I suppose. You know, you feel better for it if you work hard for it and you save for it and you get it yourself rather than everything given to you. Yeah, you, know you I mean? feel more proud. Like, yeah, 100%. I always try to cut corners yeah. for 30 odd years and yeah. it never ever got me anywhere, ever. Mm. And I was no. never happy doing it. Now that I make more money, now everything's legit. Like I feel proud. I yeah, feel, and it, do you know what? I don't spend as much when actually being a little fucker yeah. back in the day. I felt as if yeah. I was constantly burning it. I don't know if that's a sense of guilt because I mm. wasn't earning it, but now I'm penny pinching. Yeah. I still like nice things. Oh, I still get nice yeah, watches. Yeah. I still go yeah, luxury yeah. holidays. Like I'm shooting for the stars. Yeah. But it's, um, I enjoy it more, and I feel as if I save more because I'm earning legit. Like I think fuck that. Like sometimes I I like to go a bit of shopping. And I look at a pair of trainers, five, six hundred quid. I think, oh, but then I think, ride it ah, in a little bit, yeah. That, but man, it's, it's that 50 50 thing, you know. There's the half of you that thinks, oh, you've got to keep a bit of dough back, and then there's the other half of you who thinks, as corny as it sounds, YOLO, do you know what I mean? Yeah. And, and, and the last 18 months has proven, you know, life is short, do you know what I mean? You've got to enjoy yourself. But as a kid, having older cousins and, and you know, hand me down clothes. You know, I remember my paper round money, I bought my first designer t-shirt and it was a Kangol t-shirt. I thought I was the bollocks, do you know what I mean? But I think where I didn't have all that sort of stuff when I was younger, like the Air Maxes and the Reeboks, I had like Inter sport trainers and stuff like that. I think that's why I've, not an obsession, but I think that's why my only vice is, is clothes now. You know, I love my Stone Island. I've got a dressing room full of, you know, clothes and trainers and stuff, but... You know, none of it's on a credit card. I've worked hard for it. And when I walk into my dressing room, I think, you know, that's that's just nice. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Although I wear an urban T-shirt throughout the week and then because I'm with my dog on the weekends, I wear the same tracky bottoms and, and Air Max 95s because yeah. I'm going in the fields with mm -hmm. him. Do you know what I mean? So, but yeah, it's nice. Where it's did nice. your fascination then from for cars start? Was that a very young Always age? Always as a kid. You know, like matchbox cars. I had that little play mat with all the roads on it. Mm. But I got OCD and I was really, um, even from a real young age, everything has to be particular and in an order. So I had all my cars lined up. They were all in a colour order. You know, my mum and dad probably thought I was mental. But yeah, cars have always been my thing. My, my granddad um on yeah my mum's dad he was he was always into cars he had a chocolate brown jag xj um he he 
he was from East London, so he was a, a bit of a geezer. His, his brother, Charlie, used to roll about in a big jag as well, big sheepskin jacket. So I thought, oh, they're, they're cool, do you know what I mean? That's cool. But yeah, my granddad always had nice cars. My dad loved his cars, um, but like I say, never really had the money to treat himself. Mm-hmm. We had a Golf GTI and a few bits back in the day, but cars have always been the thing, always. And to be able to work in an industry now where it is just about cars... You know, we'll probably go into it later how I did, but it's a, it's a genuinely a dream come true because you know I'm 38 now, and it's only been the last five or six years that I've been working with cars. Um, you know, so it's yeah, it's, it's amazing. Yeah, you always amazing. in and out of jobs back in the day. Yeah, always. More stability. Never, never, yeah, no, just it was just you know, white van man was always the thing. I was always a delivery driver. I even did my lorry license, got my class two, so I did a bit of truck driving as well. Um, but yeah, I mean, it was it's almost embarrassing because I do get kids DM me saying, "How did you how did you yeah. get to where you are?" Do you know what I mean? And I'm like, that's 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 embarrassing because I can't tell them. It, it, it's a mixture of you know being around the right people, having my social media as well, um, yeah, meeting the right people, and a little bit of luck and a little bit of doing the right thing, you know. Um, and that's and that's where it was. You know, I went from I did eight years of my last job, and that was delivering survey equipment around London. So pack the van up five o'clock in the morning um drive down to london do laps around london drop off survey equipment and and, and that's where the social media started because if you're driven in london you'll know that most of the time you're sat in traffic mm-hmm. board and this was when instagram about six seven years ago it's 15 second video so i used to do like little videos myself you know thinking i was funny you know little skits little bit of jokes about road rage you know like so ginger cabby now and um you know dapper laughs you know they're still doing all that banter mm-hmm. and that's how it started and I cringed to think of my username back then, but it was Lenny the Geezer. That's what it was, <laughs> at Lenny the Geezer. Oh, it sends a shiver down my spine when I think about it now, but I can't hate it because it got me to, it got the most of my yeah. followers, you know? And um, I remember I was driving back from Scotland, my missus was driving, and I followed this kid called Lord Aleem. I don't know whether you've seen him, but he's a young lad from Birmingham. Him and his, um, him and his dad owned this huge rental company in Birmingham like 20 odd supercars like 10 Rolls Royces like he was one of the first to bring you know cars to social media and I was like who's this kid like he was there was a picture of him in the Daily Mail brand new Rolls Royce phantom drophead one ORD on the number plate Lord out the back like that I was like who's this little who's this little like and um, started following him and I was like oh he's just like obviously into his cars he's made it and this is when he back then he had like 400,000 followers and I remember making this little meme thing. Do you remember those motivational posters with a black surround yeah. and it'd be like, it'd be a picture of Rowan and it'd be like teamwork. Mm. We could all pull yeah, together yeah, something. Yeah, yeah. So I made one with that picture and I said, Lord Lee making Instagram call for car followers, like car people. And he reposted that and instantly 2,000 more followers. So his followers became mine. We met up at a car show. We became friends. We started knocking about together. So then his followers become my followers, you know, got up to sort of five, 6,000. Um, then I met Yanni, Yanni Mize, who's my, my older brother. I love that guy to bits. He's, he's a great guy and he's, he's helped a lot with where I am now um, with opportunities and stuff like that. But then we became really good friends. We started hanging about, um, again, sharing his followers. And then I just became, you know, in that world. Yanni introduced me then to Simon, who owns Urban Automotive. We, you know, we spoke about, you know, potentially me coming on board, had no qualifications, never sold anything in my life apart from a bit of weed when I was 17. And I just, and I just got stuck straight into this, this car world. Do you know what I mean? And it was, like I say, networking, you know, meeting all the right people, got this opportunity at Urban. I didn't even know I was going to be selling cars, you know, so I just said, well, do you want to come on board? You know, um, I thought I was going to be delivering cars or, or, you know, something in the wear, you know, whatever. And then the contract came through, sales executive. I was like, right, oh, shit, now I've got to learn how to sell cars and stuff like that. But I'm very lucky in the in the world that I'm in, you've already sort of made your decision that you want to buy a £265,000 modified Lamborghini Urus. Do you know what I mean? You, you, you've already sort of know what you want. And um, Urban split with what I do, which is new vehicle sales. And, you know, we've got a used car showroom. And those boys are always at me saying, oh, you're just an order taker. And I am, you know, it's very, I, I don't, I wouldn't call myself a car salesman because like I say a lot of the people that come to us, they know what they're getting. They, they, they've already made their decision, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, but yes, yeah, it's, 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 it's cool. I mean, Urban is such an awesome, awesome business to work for. And I do feel really, really lucky. Yeah, you seem happy. You've got a good mate, energy I'm, and you look happy and you speak positive and that's what life's all about yeah. like, I watched a video yesterday and 
somebody was building a, a ten million pound mansion mm. and they had a shit day and they were going in. He was going to look at it. It was like six months left to build, and he was unhappy. And he was sitting in this in this mansion watching. I think it was these Mexican workers. They're all singing and dancing and yeah. having a laugh. And he was thinking, these guys are building my house, making fucking ten dollars an hour. Mm. I'm building a ten million pound mansion, and these guys are happier than me. Like it's just the way you see things. Like, yeah, I'm, everything's relative, but you also need to consider how lucky you are. And I do feel feel really lucky. Um, you know, I've got I've got friends who are very very high net worth like 100 million pound plus and are they happier than me i don't know you know they they their problems are their problems you know what i mean my problems are mine my problems or problems are nowhere near what some people have to go through do you know what i mean so yeah. you do have to sort of step back and and what is nice is because i have come from you know not much money and stuff like that I, now i'm here you know and maybe a little bit later in life, you know, there's kids who are 21, 22 with Lambos. I'm 38 and I only get to drive them, you know. I've, but but then I think to myself, well, you know, seven years ago, I was in a, a diesel Vox, um, Vauxhall Insignia. Do you know what I mean? There's nothing wrong with that. But being a car guy, I'm like, oh, now yeah. I've got a brand new Merkey class. Do you know what I mean? And I look, at, I, you know, I come out, the, out of work every evening. I look at that and I think... I've got a brand new Merc, it's on 21 inch Vossons, it's all blacked out, I've got my Lenny private plate. I'm like, that's the bollocks. Mm. To some people, that's nothing, do you know what I mean? But to me, that I feel so so happy. But, you know, I said earlier to you, um, if if Instagram and my following and everything just ended tomorrow, I'd still have all the important things in life. My wife, my house, my dog. Um, I'd still have work. It might be a little bit more difficult because we sell so many cars through social media. Um but I'd still have all those important things and, and, and love of my wife and happiness. So yeah. that is, you know, that is a blessed life. Yeah. You know? That is blessed and to show gratitude to what you have and then anything else that comes into your life. 100%. Then just becomes a bonus. What was the first car you sold? Oh, mate. Um, Range Rover SVR. Range, brand new Range Rover SVR. And it was a, it, this was where I sort of suddenly realised, right, I'm in this shit now. <laughs> so I got a phone call from a... Um, I won't say his name, but he's a. It was like a um, like a Russian accent, and he was like, "I'm I'm coming to buy that Range Rover SVR." Usually, you get I, I want to come and have a look at it, work out some finance, you know, stuff like that. But he's like, "I'm coming to buy it," and because you in this kind of game, you do get like a few tire kickers and stuff. Like that. I was like, "Yeah, cool, all right, no worries, sir. See you in a little while." Anyway, pulls up, and you can't judge anyone. Do you know what I mean? My biggest customer has had 14 cars off me and he's a builder. He comes in a high-vis jacket, rigger boots. You know, you can't judge anyone. Mm -hmm. But anyway, you always look at like trainers and watches and stuff just to try mm -hmm. and get a feel for it. Anyway, geezer knocks on the door. I was like, oh, you're... He's like, no, no, I'm blah, blah. This is... And he opened the door for him, jumped out the back of this stretch S-Class. Um, only in his early 20s. I noticed, a, I think it was a Richard Melee watch, 150 grand. Um, and yeah, walked through and... Um, yeah, literally did one lap of the car, sort of looking at it. He's like, yeah, I'll take it. And handed me his Coots debit card. I was like, like I, you know, it takes me longer to pick a pair of trainers and he's buying a 120 grand Range Rover mm -hmm. SVR on a debit card. I was like, right, okay, let me just sort out what I was scrabbling about. I was like, this, this has never happened before. That was my first sale. Of course, we get, you know, the normal hardworking like builders and scaffolders and normal, like, everyday kind of people. But we have, you know, all sorts. And... And that's the thing with this job, you kind of have to be a bit of a comedian. You have to be, you know, you have to pronounce your T's if it's someone who's a bit more of a gentleman and they want to feel like they're being spoken to by a car, you know, salesman. Mm -hmm. Or you can speak to someone like I'm speaking to you now. You know, I've got a lot of traveller customers. I've got Albanians, you know, I've got all the, all the boys and, you know, I'll get on with all of them. You know, you've got to be able to... But yeah, that was my first sale and I was like... You know, coming from a white van man and not seeing much money, you know, not being around these kind of people... That was like, phew, literally, like me or you going into a shop and buying a pair of trainers, looking around and me doing that with a 120 grand Range Rover SVR. Mad. Yeah. Mad. What's the most awkward people to work with? The people with money or the people with less money? With less. All day long. The, the traveller customers I've got, they come in, they've got nothing to prove. The Albanians, they've got nothing to prove. The high net worth individuals, they've got nothing to prove. They're cool. Everyone's so cool. The ones that are getting there, I'm not going to say they're rude or arrogant, but you can tell that they're just like, you know, they they want to get there. And then if for whatever reason they can't, they don't get a proof of finance, you're like, I'm really, why? I'm earning enough. Try again. You know, and, and they, they've got this kind of like chip on their shoulder sort of thing. But yeah, they're, they're a little bit more awkward to deal with. 
But it's nice because there is such a mix. You know, everyone thinks that we're just selling to celebrities and football players. We're not. It's normal normal people who have done well. Mm-hmm. Like I say, my biggest customer, 14 cars so far, is a builder. And he's a lovely, lovely guy. You know, but he said, you know, he's gone into main dealerships and they, you know, in these rigger boots and he's, you know, it's like the pretty woman thing. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Big mistake, huge. I'm going to buy that. And he comes, you know, he came to us and, um, you know, we're just car enthusiasts. My boss, Simon, is incredible. You know, and he, he just started this on his driveway. Seven years later, we've got about 60, 70,000 square foot of business, 70 odd staff. We, you know, produce our own carbon fiber, manuf- you know, we've got our own carbon fiber manufacturing facility. Um, yeah, and it's just going one way. You know, we've taken over the, the game. Um, but yeah, the, the type of people that come through the doors is very, very interesting. And, you know, people that I wouldn't have met, you know, six, seven years ago. So, mm-hmm. I, you know, I think how much my life has changed between 30, you know, the age of 30 yeah. and 40. What's it going to be like from 40 to 50? And that's exciting, you know? That's why you just got to keep pushing the limits. 100%. More yeah. And the shirt. thing is, I've never, yeah. I've never been, um, I've never had huge aspirations and, you know, people are probably going to hate me for this because I am in this job and, you know, oh, lucky prick. I mean, he's landed that. But I, I've i never been um, one to, right, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. You know, you see so much bullshit on social media nowadays, these motivational pages and these, you know, like FX traders and stuff like that. Stood in front of a rented Lambo, Louis Vuitton bag. You know, I can earn you thousands of pounds a month. All you've got to do is this. you just got to believe, dream and achieve. It's like sometimes there's no amount of dreaming that will get you to where you've got to be a realist as well. Do you know what I mean? And that might sound a little bit negative, a little bit down, but you've got to, you know, if you've been trying something for two, three, four, five years and it's still not working for you, you've got to think, right, what am I doing wrong? There's got to be something else. I'm all up for, you know, positivity and confidence and stuff like that. But if you're not getting anywhere with it, you've got to sort of look. You've got to change your narrative. 100%. What's the most expensive card you've sold? Um... Yeah, Lamb- I think it was a Lamborghini event at door, 280,000. So I've got, I mean, I've got, you know, I've got friends like Cole Hartley um, who are huge, you know, they've been going, for, Tom Hartley's dad's been going 40, 50 years and, you know, they sell like three million pounds of Bugattis and stuff for, for fun. I mean, it's just madness, you know, like I went to a um, an amazing event last week, supercar driver at Donington Park and, you know, I'm stood there and when you're looking at Ferraris and event Lamborghini Aventadors and they're the norm and then a 3.5 million pounds Bugatti Chiron just drives past you and then you've got a Pagani and Koenigsegg and you just think, and again, these are normal, hardworking people. It's usually property or something like that, but they're just nice people. You know, you could be stood chatting to someone and they get into a three million pound hypercar, you know? So yeah, 280 grand Aventador, which, you know, that's to some people, that's that's nothing. To me and you, it's, you know, a free bedroom house, isn't it? It's unbelievable, though. Mad. How much money people actually spend on cars. I always thought maybe it would have been the high-end clients that were always trying to wheel and deal and trying to get money off it and trying oh, to get it Oh, don't get cheaper. me wrong. You don't get to be a multi-millionaire without being a little bit of a, you know, uh, you know I've got a multi-millionaire um, customer who's always trying to get, you know, if he, if he don't get money off the car, he wants a free tracker. Do you know what I mean? Or if he, want, he wants to go to mobilise, oh, can you just paint the calipers for me? You know, they're all like, but, mm-hmm. you know, you don't get to where you are without hustling a little bit. Yeah, you know? that's, that's business, isn't it? Yeah, exactly that's that. Business. Exactly Does that. the Novo ever wear off, though, by, by driving any car that you want now to well, then thinking, shit, man, like, like driving down in a Lambo there, look, everyone looking, get, you can hear the, the noise. It never gets any less special. Never gets any less special. Yeah? Not for, not for me. Like, I, I must have driven... 20 or 30 Lambos. You know, I'm good friends with the guys at Lamborghini and Brad. They, they usually chuck me a demo whenever I'm up here. Um, every time I get in it, never gets any less special. And I'd never want it to either. As soon as it does, I think, well, cars have been my thing all my life. If I get into a Lambo and it doesn't feel special anymore, and that, and that, you know, I certainly don't feel sorry for multi-millionaires, but, you know, these kids who are sort of 19, 20 and they get given a Lambo, you know, and their next thing is, well... You know, I've got a friend who had an Aventador SV when he was 21. And then he's got, you know, where do you go from that? Is it helicopters? Is it yachts? Do you know what I mean? Like, are you content? It, it's mad. Like, I, I love it. I still love it. It doesn't, it doesn't get any less special. You know, I've driven yeah. everything. I've driven a LaFerrari, which is 2 million quid. Um, or about 3 million quid now. Um, Pagani Huera. Huera. See, even I do it. Mm-hmm. Pagani Huayra. Um, yeah, drove that round the corner. That's a three point five million pound car. And it's incredible, you know. Why is that so expensive? I don't know. I don't know. A lot. I don't know. Why you know why Gucci trainers five hundred quid when they could be hundreds? And yeah. it? it's that designer brand thing, isn't it? Mm. 
It's just pure eager as well with some people with money. 100%. They just want to show off to the, the next door neighbour. The majority of these exactly. people don't even drive their cars. That's when the you go to Dubai, you see a lot of these big properties that are, are just, nobody's in them. No, People no. just buying them up. It's like the, 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 the um, I think mean, it's number one Hyde Park. So where I used to work in London, I was so interested in the property. So one Hyde Park with these um, apartments by the, the Candy Brothers. Mm -hmm. And beautiful, incredible, you know, facing um, the parks and stuff like that, right in the centre of Mayfair or Kensington. And I think only 10% are occupied full time. And I just think like, and it's the same with Lambos. You know, this Lambo, my mate Nick, who lent me this this Lambo today, it's got like 12,000 miles on it, which is, which for a Lambo is is a lot. Do you know what I mean? It's like 10,000 miles, whatever. Um, but he uses it, he enjoys it. And because I've got OCD, I'll do the same with trainers. You know, if I've got a brand new pair of white Gucci's, I'm like, oh, I don't want to wear them. Do you know what I mean? What if they get scuffed? Do you know what I mean? But you've mm. got to, like, again, life's too short. Just enjoy it. Enjoy it. Why is Lamborghinis not drove as as much? As, why are they not driven as much? Um, I suppose the more you drive them, um, the more mileage they have, the me less money they're worth. You know, and a lot of these people, if they keep their car for a year or two, and they they want the new one, they want the next one. So the part exchange price comes down. You know, mm. um, but but also they you can't drive them every day. They're uncomfortable. I was even just driving in today. I was like, because it's wide, it's loud. You know, you're thinking about cyclists. Every Everyone fucking hates you because you're driving a Lambo. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very uh, fun. It's a very funny thing because you know you pull up in a petrol station and you get a 50-50 reaction. You get a nice car, mate, or you get a fucking prick. <laughs> you know I mean, you that's do. Horrible. You do. You do. But I mean, I, you know, with what we we do at Urban, we um, we built a Spectre Land Rover Defender, so the James Bond Spectre film. These big, like, it looks like a Tonka toy. It's the bollocks. Do you know what I mean? Big roll cage, bucket seats, huge wheels, and that's completely opposite. You pull up in a petrol station. There, you get everyone like kids want to look at it because it looks like a tonka toy. You've got the old people because they probably recognize it from the film, but like a supercar is 50 50. And as well with a supercar, you always get someone in a seat, I beef a turbo, wanting to drive up your ass and see if you're hooning it, you know. And mm. it's just they're hard work to drive, awesome, but yeah, they're, they're difficult to drive. Has anyone ever tried to like kick the car when you're driving it or spitting it or no, do anything that nah, nasty? No, to be fair, a lot of people no. in the town like you don't get that many big, but you'll get your road range over. Or yeah, you get a beautiful Range Rovers, maybe a Ferrari the odd time in Glasgow. People used it's, to come out in eight clubs and scratch them. Yeah, and shit. I know. Never understood that. Never you understood I mean? that. But no, touch woods. Um, no, most people are fairly respectful, mm -hmm. but um, you just don't want to get road rage in, in a car like that. But I know not a lot of naughty people who've got Lambos, you know what I mean? So if they do get road rage or if they do see someone key their car, do you know what I mean? It's, mm -hmm. uh, it'll come on top for them. Yeah. <laughs> What's the best car you've ever drove? Do you know what? If, for me, it's not about the expense or the power or anything like that. You know, it, funnily enough, it was up in Glasgow um, a couple of couple of years ago when I came up here. My my all time favourite car is the Escort Cosworth because I grew up that's in proper the, old school, mate. I, I mean, I grew up in that. That's my that's my car. You know, I grew up in the Max Power generation where it was that was the working man's Ferrari and Lamborghini. We didn't even think about Lamborghinis like twenty years ago. You never saw a Ferrari or a Lamborghini. When I was a kid, like going into London, if you saw like a red Ferrari drive past, it was a spaceship. You never see stuff like that. Now they've become more affordable, you know, and finance has become easier to get. You see Lambos and Ferraris and, and social media has made it normal as well. But no, the Escort Cosworth, so my mate um, Stevie through, through Glasgow, he... Um, he had a minute escort cause he said, oh, come up, come through and drive it. And they say never meet your heroes, didn't they? And it was it was. It's you know, we're so spoiled with modern cars. I got in it, slammed the door, the door felt like a 25-year-old Ford Escort, the gearbox was all clunchy, but but I still had this massive grin on my face because it was it got, you know, took me back to the old school. Had the old garage music on. Garage never reached up here, did it? So my wife's Scottish. No, and again, she, but yeah. it's not as popular so, as, as in uh, Manchester, London. Yeah, stuff so like garage that. was a big thing for me. So I put the garage tunes on, pretended I had a Burberry baseball cap, Reebok Classics, mm. pretending I was driving down South and Seafront. That was my thing. I, yeah. I did drive a Lamborghini Countach as well. My mate Zach's Countach. Horrible thing to drive. But again, Cannibal Run too. You know, it's it's the nostalgia. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But yeah, I've been lucky. I've got, I'm very lucky. I've got um, a lot of mates who, who sort of say, oh, drive that, drive that, drive that. You enjoy that. It's brilliant. Mm -hmm. See, for the price of cars, a lot of people, if you're buying it, especially cars at 200, 300 grand, if you buy a car at 300 bags and you drive out, how much do you lose instantly? Um, see, the, the car market at the moment is mad because car mm. prices, because manufacturing has slowed right down, used car prices and stuff have gone crazy. Um, but 
say a couple of years ago, if you bought a brand new Range Rover for hundred grand, as soon as you put an owner on it and you drive it out and put a couple of thousand miles on it, it's like 20, 25 grand straight away. That's Done. Fucking hell. Yeah. You put an owner on a car like that, hundred grand car, you know, but I've heard some horror stories. When you work out the, the, the mileage, you know, like Aston Martins, for example, they're, they're awesome, awesome cars. But if you buy one brand new, do 2,000 miles on it, you could lose like 80, 90 grand. And when you work out, it costs about 50, 60 quid a mile. So you drive to Tesco and back and you spend like, you know, you've got 800 quid in depreciation. It's hideous. What? But to some people, it don't matter. To some people, they just don't mm. care. That's a lot of money yeah. to normal people, do you know what I mean? But yeah, it's, it's when you get to that level, if you can afford like a 200, 250 grand car, most of the time you don't care. Yeah. You know, like McLaren 720S is incredible cars. They're 240 grand brand new. Year or two later, they're half the money. They're half price, 120 grand with three, 4,000 miles on them. They must make fortunes it's a, though. They it's a crazy world, game, mate. Yeah. Like, Hummers were popular back maybe 10 years ago, 15 yeah. years ago. You used to see, you've seen a few people in Glasgow. Yeah, yeah. It All the drug dealers yeah. bowling about yeah. a bright yellow <laughs> Hummer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean? What size really engines are they in? Oh, they're like, I'm, I'm sure they're like a six or seven litre, something like that. Shit. Like eight miles to the gallon. Couldn't do that now at £1.40 a litre or yeah. whatever it is now. £1.50 mm -hmm. a litre. Horrendous. How about your game plan for a, a sale? Is there a certain thing that you do when people come in? Or? Play hard, not hard to get, but you just got to be relaxed. As soon as as soon as they think that you're trying to sell them a car, but again, a lot of my I'd say as high as eighty to ninety percent of my customers that come in have already made a decision. And Urban, my my side of the the business doesn't work like a normal car dealership where we've got 20 or 30 cars in stock. You know, a lot of mine are, are, are pre-orders, you know, because they're, they're not building cars fast enough. So a lot of people, if they leave me a deposit, their cars come in three, four months time. Um, it's a great problem to have, but we're, we're so busy. So again, it's not really like hard sales. You know, a lot of the time people know what they want and it's just order taking. And then I just have to speak them through their options, speak them through the finance process, you know, whether they want to track or what type of wheels they want. Do you want these options and stuff like that? So it's, I'm not going to say my job's easy, um, but it's yeah, it's it's not as hard as the people who are selling like fifteen hundred quid two grand Mondeos and and Vectras and stuff like. Why should I have that over that? Do you know what I mean? Well, this guy down the road who's got a two and a half grand Vectra, he said he can do it for that price compared to this because I was a bespoke product. You can't buy an Urban from anyone else unless it's a used vehicle. Do you know what I mean? So yeah. they have to come to us anyway. Mm -hmm. You go to cars like you talk about Escort, Cosworth, Sierra, Cosworth, all the old school cars, yeah. they hold their prices, yeah. if not even oh, become mate, more mental. expensive. Why is that the old school cars hold prices, but yet cars now are still just ass fall off it? Because they didn't build that many. Like Escort, Cosworth, Sierra, Cosworth, RS Turbos, and of course, we're talking 30, 35 years ago, so a lot of them were written off by people like me. You know, I wrote, <laughs> off, I wrote off my XR2i, do you know what I mean, with like my first car. Um, but yeah, a lot of the Cosies, you know, they were stolen as well, because they were, you know, they were great getaway cars. Mm. The Sapphire Cos were four-door, four get three big geezers in the back, two big like, geezers in the front, 300 brake horsepower, you were off. No police car back in the 80s was, was catching you up, you know? Um, it's just from the fact that there's not that many about anymore. Um, I mean, Escort Cosworths now, you get a decent one, they're 60, 70 grand, which is twice of what they were in the mm -hmm. mid 90s. Um, RS 500s, which is the, the special edition three door Cosy, um, they only made 500 of them back in 86 or 87. A lot of them were written off. They were used for rally cars, touring cars. So there's probably only about 200, 300 of them left now. Um, and that, I saw one go through auction the other day for 120 grand. You wow. could pick up a used Lamborghini Huracan for that, yeah. and it's a 30 year old Ford Sierra. Do you know mm. what I mean? And when you speak to an old boy, and when I say old boy, like someone in their early 50s, fucking hell, me and my mate Dave used to bang and race them. Like, oh, if I'd have just kept it, my Escort RS Turbo, you know, if I'd have kept that, that'd probably be worth about 15, 20 grand now. Yeah. I ended up breaking it for bits because it had a bit of rust in the floor pan. That's yeah, crazy. My, my friend used to do cars that not cool. Yeah. And you're spending 30, 40 grand on just. To do it up, yeah. engine yeah. seats, getting the what is it they call it when they get the so when it crashes it doesn't smash. yeah the roll cage all big roll, roll cage, cage yeah of course like he spent fortunes yeah and all he did was fucking crash oh, no. <laughs> all he did was crash and then he spun oh, no. out but it was oh, his no. baby and yeah it was a dodgy bastard because he was spending fortunes on it but the majority <laughs> of money he made was going straight into his cosmos yeah yeah of course and he was constantly crashing but he yeah. loved not kill yeah fucking See, I'm not that. I'm a poser James mm -hmm. I'm a proper poser like look at me I'm like turned up in a Lambo and I'm in all like <laughs> uh, like greasy yeah, my beards freshly dyed mm -hmm. this is held together with like 
like just for men and yeah. dreams do you know what I mean but I'm quite happy just posing in a car my mate took me around knock here and I tapped out after the fourth lap you're in a helmet you're sort of being yeah. thrown about and stuff like that I don't really I'm not really bored about track days you know what I mean I'm just a bit I'm just mm-hmm. a poser I'm quite happy doing twat laps around my local town centre do you know what I mean mm. how is it then getting a bit of popularity on social media hundreds of thousands of followers Sitting standing with your cars, a lot of big celebrities come in now. You're yeah. very well known. Like, does it's, that excite you as well? Yeah, it's it's nice. It's a, it's a, it's a it's a very powerful tool. Social media. Mm-hmm. Um, we we hardly sell any cars off Auto Trade or Piss and There's a lot of it's through Instagram, social media, Facebook, YouTube. Now we've got a YouTube channel now, um, which is showing the ins and outs of urban. Um, what is the YouTube channel um, at Urban Automotive so the Urban Automotive YouTube channel me and my boss Simon do a weekly um, vlog just show what's going on Um, but yeah it's it's, yeah it's really good I forgot the question (laughs) what did I ask (laughs) <laughs> was, um, what's it like oh there's the social media following oh the social media yeah because you've got a big following now you've got a lot of celebrities yeah. that that is good that does you know what, you, you know what it, it well, does it, it I does. always say social media is an illusion it's bullshit but it still feels good when your followers Mate, it are does. telling you, you, see, you, see, you, see, you see you see someone with a blue tick follow you and you're like oh who's that guy oh he's ex Love Island oh, oh he's yeah. a rugby player he's, you know these people know me do you know what I mean it's when you get you know I've got 193,000 now most of them petrolheads so if I go to a car show my you know, people like stop me after a picture and stuff. You know, me and my wife, you know, I've been with my missus for 16 years now, and I've had a social, like a fairly big social media account for, for six. So for her, it's weird because we were together 10 years before I even had a following. Do you know what I mean? So Annoying. if someone stops me at a, at a petrol station, they want a selfie, they're like, it's just a fucking car salesman. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah. But it's, you know, as long as you use it correctly, it's. It's an amazing tool. I mean, I, like I said earlier, I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for social media. And I, I do love it. When I was when I was Lenny the geezer and I was doing these funny videos and I was being a little bit more out there and obnoxious and stuff, I did get a few trolls and people not like me and stuff like that. But you should expect that. Do you know what I mean? I, I've changed it now to Lenny.urban. It's more about the cars and it's more professional because I thought, look... No one's going to buy a 250 grand car for you if you're acting like a clown on social media. Do you know what I mean? So I had to evolve. I had to change it. I'm happy for what I did because it got me to where I am now, but I had to evolve and, and turn it into something a little bit more professional. Um, having followers is is fantastic, but if if Instagram just blew up tomorrow, I'd still have all the nice things in life. Yeah. And that's the important thing. I, I do worry about the younger generation um, you know, living their life from their the constantly phone in hand and you know they you speak to a 16 or 17 year old now i mean we were at 16 17 we were a little bit awkward but now they can't you know you get messages you know we go to auto sports show we we, we show cars there and like, oh Lenny, oh mate i can't wait to meet you oh we'll have some mad bands blah blah and then you meet them in real life they're like oh i'm like another picture yeah you know yeah, and, yeah. and because they live their life mm-hmm. through through social media but when it was lenny the geezer i did yeah i did I did get a few trolls and people calling me out and stuff, but you know, I'm about, I go to car, sh- I used to go to car shows. I was always around. People could come find me. Not once did I have, you know, one person say anything to my face and I'm not a fighting man. Do you know what I mean? I'm, you know, I think my street fighting record is two and two. <laughs> I'm not a very good fighter, but I've got yeah. a bit of, I've got, you know, a bit of pride. And if someone tells, like calls me a name or says something to me, I'll go back at them. But yeah, you've got to defend your corner. Of course you have. But time, the but, trouble is with yeah. social media, no one wins. Yeah. You can't argue with someone on social media because no one wins. And what I, my mistake was always going back at people. Fuck off, mate. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Who the fuck do you think you're talking to? Oh, I said, where are you? I said, yeah. and you're like, what are you doing? You're a grown man. Day. And, yeah, you, yeah. and you do you get really aggy about it. And I, mm. I just realised, if you just block that geezer, just block it and ignore it. And what, I, what I've stopped doing as well, like my missus is my world. Like she's my angel. Do you know what I mean? Like I love her to bits. Um, and as far as I'm concerned, she's a 10. She's 5'11". She's beautiful. She's, you know, she's amazing. She's my heart. People can say what they want about me. If they say anything about my missus, fucking hell, you're in trouble, mate. I don't care who you are. Like I say, I'm not a fighting man, but I've got pride. You're having it. Mm-hmm. And I realise well, if I stop t- posting pictures of my missus, you know, like with me and my missus in a nice car, you take that out. Do you know what I mean? Like, why am I showing my missus off anyway? Mm-hmm. To who? What am I expecting? The last one was about two years ago. Bentley gave me a, a GT for the weekend. So we went for a, a pub lunch and like a picture in the car. I'm like, who are you showing off to? What? And, and some geezer wrote, yeah, I'll do her. Straight, uh, straight in yeah. the DMs. Who the fuck do you think you are, mate? It took me five minutes to find out where you live, mm. you fucking little... Do you know what I mean? 
take her out of the equation. You don't need to show her off. She's mine anyway. Yeah. Well, who are you showing her off to? I know that she's beautiful. I know she's lovely. So just keep her to yourself. But it's sad that we need to hide certain things because uh, people are little fuckers out yeah. there. They are all they've got is yeah. their screen that yeah. they can write shit, talk shit. And... But I'm proud. I want to show yeah. her off and stuff. Do you know what I mean? But, you know, like through school, I was... I was hanging around with the popular kids, but I wasn't a popular kid. I was sort of an in-betweener, do you know what I mean? So, you know, and, and we talk about how, you know, Instagram sort of appeases you and it gives you this little bit of a boost, a little bit of confidence and stuff. You know, I've got a Facebook page that I never use, but it's just to show people that I didn't like in school that I get to drive Lambos. Look at my designer gear. Look at my, I've got a Rolex, mate, now. You used to call me a fucking prick in school. Mm -hmm. Look at me now. That's ridiculous. I don't need to prove anything to anyone. But you kind of feel like, you know, half of yeah, you is yeah. like, ah, do you know, it is what it is. But the other half is like, no, I want you to see that I'm doing, mm -hmm. you know, I've come from this and I'm doing well now. And it shouldn't be like that. That's just part of the insecurities for, from the past. Because even you, you were, you weren't hesitating, but you we spoke for months now and you were always like, ah, will anybody like my story or this and that? But <laughs> everybody's got a story because you yeah. really actually remind me Thomas Skinner. Oh, uh, there's love another that guy. guy who's two of kind of get the like, same so energy. Like, when he again, when he, if he's selling me a mattress, I'm going to. If you had mattresses, he could sell me I'm anything. The same as you, like, you've got the big smile, you've yeah. got a good aura, you've got I a good love energy. Him, love that guy. Same as Tommy as yeah. well. Tommy Mallet. I met Tommy yeah. a couple of times. Lovely, oh, lovely. Love shout out to both great guys. Yeah, but I love listening to them because, yeah. and I did. It's this like again. It's this self confidence thing. I just thought I'm not just a chubby middle aged car salesman like with a mockney accent. Who's going to want to listen to me? But. I'm not a gangster, I'm not a drug dealer, I didn't know the craze, but maybe my story is a little bit more relatable to an 18 year old kid who doesn't know what to do with his life. Do you know what I mean? And I did have this thing like, James, like, I don't. I wanna do you justice, you're smashing it at the moment, you've had some heavy hitters on. You know, do, do you think people will like my story? Are you gonna like, mm. but look at you, you're a genius man, you're killing this thing, <laughs> do you know what I mean? So you, you, know, you yeah. knew what you was doing, but it's, again, you know, it's nice, I don't think you've had many car people on, have you? So no. hopefully, I'll draw people, you know, to yeah. this who are into their cars and, you know, they'll hear Escort Cosmo and think, fucking mm -hmm. hell, I haven't seen one of them for ages. Did you look at the time you, you sent, they done the meme of that man, then it opens doors, me and you put a photo up today. Yeah. Some people from my side will follow you and you'll yeah, follow absolutely. me. And then before you know it, I could possibly like a guest that's following you. Yeah. It opens doors to other people yeah, who he's related 100%. to. Yeah. Everything's just straight business yeah, for yeah. me. Because I could recommend so many people to yeah. you. That, so Yanni, like I say, he's my older brother. I love mm. him to bits. But his story, again, he's someone, people see him now. Yeah, at one point he had three Lambos, all color coded, all the same, you know, he's had his watches, you know, he's done very, very, very well for himself. He used to just work like stack shelves in Marks and Spencer. And he, you know, he doesn't come from a wealthy background. He has done everything himself. But people see the end result. That's the thing. I remember when he bought his, he had an Aventador SV that he bought. And some kid put, oh, why did you get another Lambo? Everyone's got a Lambo. You should have got a Porsche 918. I'm like, how nor what, How weird is it that mm. on social media, having a Lambo is normal. Having a Rolex watch isn't normal. Having 450 quid Valentino trainers isn't normal. But the trouble is with social media, that's the, <clears> that's the dark side of it, is that... You know, and Tommy touched touched this. Mm -hmm. You know, it normalises everything, and that's that's what I worry about the younger generation. And I've worked really hard for for the stuff that I've got now. Um, no one's going to give you anything, especially if you come from my background where your mum and dad don't have much money. You have to get everything yourself. Um, it's almost as if, and I'm, it always sounds like I'm having a go at the younger generation, but it's not their fault. It's not their fault. You know, they just want everything now. You know, I'm I'm better off than I ever have. Been and I'm 38. I'm two years off 40, and I'm, but I'm in a lovely position now. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like I could fill my car up without keeping an eye on the. You know that that's a big uh, thing for me. Back mm -hmm. when you know six seven years ago, I used to. Oh, what's my bank account saying? I'll put 30 quid in today. Mm -hmm. I'll get paid in like a week and a half. Do you know what I mean? That should see me through. Whereas now I could fill a car up, and to me that's that's amazing. I could fill a car up with full tank and not watch the. You know, mm -hmm. wait for the click. Yeah, that's freedom. Yeah, to have a bit of freedom and I always say money doesn't make you happy but when you're in a good place and you're making money fuck me man it's a beautiful thing yeah. if you're a miserable bastard and you make money you're going to be a hundred times worse Yeah, if you're a good person making decent money you enjoy life better I've got mates who are, who are happy you know they're, they're, they're brickies or scaffolders they own a bit of dough but they're not minted but they're happy I've got mates who are multi multi millionaires they're arguing with their missus they're, you know their fucking Lamborghini is broken down you know they're, they're this they're that they're moving into a new house it's that stress you know where's the, the happy medium do you know what I mean mm. and, and, and that's the thing like I say if, if everything ended tomorrow you know I've, I've got my wife and I've got my dog and I've got a few nice bits and, and that's that's a really blessed life you know and I realise how how lucky I am yeah. which is nice do you ever get anybody coming in and speaking down to you 
because they have got so much paper. No, no, do you know what? That's no, okay, that's you know what? lucky yeah. then. But uh, do you know what? I think, again, as well, most people who, who walk through the doors at Urban kind of know who I am anyway. Mm. And I do put myself out there. You know, when I, got, when, I got this, when I got this watch, this was the first thing that I treated myself to. First thing I treated mm. myself to. And I went into the local Fraser Hart and um, a, a customer of mine who had about seven or eight watches off them said, like, I mentioned my name, might get me a foot in the door. I said, look, I want a, a Hulk, a Pepsi, a GMT or a Batman. Gave her a list of what I wanted. Nine months later, I got a phone call. Got a Batman coming in. Do you want it? Hundred percent. I'll have it. I'll have it. Scratched about a bit of money. You know, I had about five and a half. I had to borrow a grand off a mate, but I knew I had to have it. Um, but that took me two years to post that. Two years because I didn't want people to think, "Oh, look, he, like he's showing off." I never yeah. really post just about that. But I'm really proud of that. Do you know what I mean? And every time I look at that, I think, "No, that's an achievement." Do you know what I mean? But it's hard because in the in the you know, the game that I'm in, everything's about luxury goods, you know, luxury cars, luxury watches and stuff like that. And that was never my world. Never my world. Um, but now a lot of the a lot of the high net worth people that come through the door, they're lovely. They're cool. I've not, you know, I've not met one person yet. I thought, oh, do you know what? You're going to be hard work. You get you get customers that have problems. You know, we're like everyone. You know, every car has problems. So you have warranty issues. People are a little bit artsy and stuff like that. But it's um, you know, you know that cars have problems. It's the way you handle it, and, yeah. and we like to think that our customer service is really good. Mm-hmm. So it's less opportunity for someone yeah. to sort of shout at us and talk down at us. So urban cars. Let's talk about urban cars. Yeah. What is the what is that business? So my my boss Simon started it with um, with a partner on his driveway. So he was in IT before. Um, left left that company. Um, um, too young to retire so started doing up cars on his driveway Land Rover Defenders the old school Land Rover Defenders mm-hmm. the old boxy things um, built two sold them very quickly saw a gap in the market um, got a small unit um, and then a couple of years later Land Rover announced that they weren't making the Defender anymore so he moved on to Sports and Vogues um, started with off the shelf kits from like AC Schnitzer and um, Character, a few other bits and we branded it Urban a year later um, we started designing our own. We, I say we lock out any involvement. Mm. I mean, it's only because I'm proud of working for Urban. He started designing his own kits, carbon fiber um, bumpers. And we just, you know, the brand just got bigger and bigger and bigger with the help of social media. Yanni was one of the first people. And back then he had like half a million, 600,000 followers. So people see Yanni in an Urban Range Rover, boom. And he's, I mean, talk about networking. He has got a huge network footballers, celebrities, high net worth individuals in London, um, all across the UK, to be fair. So as soon as people started seeing that Yanni was involved with Urban and Yanni liked Urban cars, that's when it started going. So it's gone from Simon doing up a couple of Land Rover Defenders on his driveway to this multi-million pounds you know, business where we've got a 40,000 square foot HQ where I am, um, a 20,000 square foot manufacturing facility where we build all the carbon fibre, um, a 10,000 square foot used car place. It's it's a it's a machine. It's huge. Um, but that wouldn't have been like that if it wasn't for the power of social media. And, you know, we... I think when we came on the scene, there was a lot of um, competitors that really didn't like us because they started to see that we were taking their customers. Um, but we're not like a normal car showroom as well. Like I wear, you know, jeans, a t-shirt, nice pair of trainers, and, and or in winter a hoodie, and it's a very relaxed atmosphere because of the we know the product we've got. We don't have to really sell it too hard. Suited and booted, kind of. No, we're yeah. not. Yeah, and that's. I think that's very old school. I'd rather, mm-hmm. you know, if I'm speaking to like Tom Skinner, like he could literally sell me anything. Just, yeah. you know, just with the, you know, the the, the chat and the banter and, and stuff like that. I mean, like I said earlier, I'm a comedian. You know, I know when I need to pronounce my T's. And I know when I can mm-hmm. speak to that person like that. Um, but it's become it's just become a, a huge success. Um, I don't think I've had much part of that. I've, I've maybe I've brought attention to it with the help of my social media, but my boss, Simon, I, I love him to bits. He's, he's, a, he's a genius. And again, he, he gave me the opportunity. You know, he was just taking on this this white van man who, who's never sold anything before in his life and, and, you know, trusted me. And this is where I do need to give myself a little bit of a pat on the back because it was Yanni who helped me out with that. Yanni said to Si, look, you know, he's one of my best mates, needs an opportunity. And then it was up to me to turn that opportunity into a, a, mm. a success. You know, now I've been given this role as, as new vehicle sales manager. So I've had a bit of promotion, which is nice. Congratulations. Um, thank you. Yeah, I'm really, really happy about that. Um, so, you know, people can, you know, give you all these opportunities, but it's up to you to be able to, 
move Grass, forward with it. Yeah, yeah 100%. That's, that's important. That's why sometimes you, you might discredit yourself. But everybody, there's opportun- opportunities present themselves to so many different people, but mm. it's actually to grasp it. Yeah. You never fucked up. Like some young kid getting into a job like that in their 30s and then getting that, driving Lamborghinis and Range Rovers. Right, in a car off. Day, like yeah, yeah, I'd have been like... shagging birds left, right and centre. Yeah. <laughs> with the response days Taking customers and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like, I'll take you on a test drive, yeah. darling. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, with that mentality I had five, ten years ago, yeah. I'd have fucked that. Yeah. Now I'd have seen that as an opportunity. Well, I did have to I did have to change, you know, and I did have to evolve the whole Lenny mm. the Geezer thing. And it did get me in trouble on point. I did upset someone. I'm not going to go into into that but I did I did upset someone and I had to say sorry to them it was a it was a post that I put up um but yeah you, you do have to be careful because there's so many eyes on you and it was then I realized that you can't just be a dick online you know I mean there's people who, who, who still do that. they still do the funny videos and they still like but that, that had that does have a shelf life it really does you know mm. and I, I've I had to evolve into Lenny.urban where it was more about the cars because like, so I, I wouldn't have bought a car off me like four or five years ago I was a End. Yeah, I don't know. I, yeah. I, I, don't, I don't think I was. I was just a bit of a joker. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, but just that's of... okay. Like, we all cringe sometimes that we're past. I've done shit and I go, shit. but it makes you the person who you are. That like, you learn from that, you grow from that. We're yeah. all young. We'll want attention. We'll want people to tell us we're doing great. That's just a mask. Yeah, for yeah. some sort of thing that we're. We're, we're but we do with. we do because yeah. I do take it personally sometimes I do sort of look at the you know I say that I don't look at the numbers but I sometimes do I think well why did that post get yeah. as many likes as that and why why oh, I've noticed that they've unfollowed me why have they done that like mm. was it this that I said or was it this that I've done and you do you do take it on and you and no matter how old you are who you are you know whether you're a gangster whether you're like mm. you know whoever you, you of course you take that on you take yeah. you know everyone just wants to. I think everyone wants to be like a lot of people want yeah, to be like everybody does and if you see you don't like even this yeah. makes, even this whole thing makes me nervous I, you know I try not to look at YouTube comments because the YouTube comment section yeah, is fucking yeah, savage isn't ruthless. they you know even yeah. on, on the Urban Channel people follow us and they know my face is going to be all over mm-hmm. it but it's still like fucking Lenny yeah. do you know what I mean and I, I <laughs> do I take that personally yeah. half of me is like oh why don't I, they like me and then the other half of me is like fuck off you know? they don't fucking like themselves so it's just I can't, take that with a pinch of salt remember it's people just sitting in their house nothing much else to do but, yeah. I, but hate but there's so many good people out there yeah. as well there's so many people that will take things from this interview and so many different things that if you're having a bad day and I seen you driving up in a Lambo and you're posting about it I'm thinking this guy's doing my fucking head in <laughs> unfollow it's not because you're doing yeah, anything yeah, wrong yeah, yeah. it's because I've had a shitty day and yeah. I don't want to see somebody yeah. living their best but, life like, opinions do my head in like, if I, especially if I don't ask for it but look, people could be so rude like I'm scrolling through Instagram and if I see something I don't like I don't feel important enough to have to tell them that I don't like it mm. I'll just scroll on and hope the next picture is like a picture of Lucy Pinder or something do you know what I mean or mm. like a nice car or a nice new jacket that I fancy I don't right, I'm going to stop my day and I'm going to go on that page and I'm going to tell him that I don't like that because he needs to hear that I don't like that I've never understood that. Do you know what I mean? I'm not that. You know, I post a picture of um, you know a, a customer's car that's been wrapped a funky colour. Oh, they fucking ruined that. Well, <laughs> hold on a minute. I didn't. I yeah. didn't ask you. And taste is subjective. Do you know what I mean? Your ruined is his. Oh, mate, I'm so happy. Thank you very much. I love that. That's amazing. Yeah. Wrap a car, chrome rose gold. Oh, you've ruined that, mate. That's tacky, awful. Blah blah. But yeah, but you don't like that. He loves it. Shut mm-hmm. your mouth. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And that's the one thing about social media. There's a lot of yeah. like, you know people that are just so self-important. But, but that's the, the name of the game. That's where the more your following grows, the more shit that's going to, and more times that's going to happen. But again, I always say this, but never take criticism for someone you've never take advice from. So that's just, a great saying. Just yeah, 100%. fuck everybody. Like, it's difficult, man. Like, yeah. I say it. Then sometimes <laughs> I think, I I'm just loading up the gun and just start firing yeah. shots as well because I think, well, do you know what? I've had enough. Yeah. Fuck you. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I ain't no mug, man. Yeah. Like, we can, because we're like, becoming professionals and, I'm becoming a brand as well. Yeah, yeah. I need to be careful, but then sometimes I've still get fired oh, in me where I go, do you know what? Oh, yeah, boom. I'll say 30 years without social media yeah. where, you know, if you have a problem with someone, you know, mm-hmm. one of you is walking off with a runny nose, do you know what yeah. I mean? But but now, you know, people can get, you know, they've got that security of saying it behind a screen and you've just got, and there's no amount of times that my missus tells me, just fucking ignore them. It's obviously a divvy who's unhappy with themselves. Mm. 
you're still like, oh, you still got that fire. Yeah. Like I say, I'm not a fighting man. I'm not a hard man. I've had a few rows, but I won't have anyone take the piss. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? And that's the that's yeah. the hardest thing. And especially now because I'm a representative of Urban, you know, and I, I I'm a proud representative of Urban, and I have to represent Urban the right way. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I need to to be seen to be doing that. But sometimes I just want yeah, to everybody's got. But fired again, on them. no one's ever said anything to me. And this is a, this isn't like a, a to a, come and a, test. A, this, you. Yeah, this yeah. is this isn't an invitation. Yeah. But no one's ever said anything to my face. You know, and I've had a lot of people. Who, you know, feel like they've got a problem with me for no reason, but no one's ever said anything to me in real life. Do you mm-hmm. know what I mean? So I think that just shows the type of people that do get aggy online. And, you know, like I said earlier, I know a lot of naughty people, like some of my customers, you know, and if I ever think of one of my, like, really, really naughty customers, I can't imagine him talking shit on social media. So who's the type of person that is talking shit on social media? Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But, um, yeah, it's a, it's a very important, it's a very powerful yeah. tool if used correctly. You've had a lot of celebrities through your doors as well. You've yeah. seen where a lot of celebrities yeah. are kind of in that world now. Yeah. Do you know what is nice? I, I don't know footballers. So I, mm. I, as a kid, I was really into football. But when I started getting more into cars and girls and stuff, 17, 18 years old, I just, I just, I just lost, lost the love of it. So when a footballer walks through the door, I'm like, all right. I, I, I treat them like a normal customer. I think they probably like that as well because they don't get all, like, you know, the, the mm-hmm. hype salesman, oh, let me get a picture, you know, from my mates and stuff like that. I had one guy walk through the door and he came in. I mean, he was just in for, um, what was he in for? Oh, I can't remember. A set of wheels or something like that. We were chatting away, chatting away. I was like, oh, what do you do then? He said, I'm a footballer. I was like, oh, cool. Didn't go into it because I, I don't care who he plays for or anything like that. Anyway, chatting, 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 got on really well with him, like a good bit of banter, and he, he left. And, and boys came downstairs, you know who that was, didn't you? I was like, no idea, mate. He just he just won the league, it's Jeffrey Schlup. Like that was when he played for Leicester when they just won the league. I was like, oh, what a lovely fella. But that's nice, I don't get all sort of hyped yeah. about it. You know, it's, it's you know, we had um, Katie Price come in, remember the pink Range Rover she had? Yeah. Yeah, that was us. Why was that? <laughs> the customer's always right. Yeah. Customer's always yeah. right. But you've got to, you know, you've got to treat people not for what you see in the papers. And she was lovely. You know, when we went to go and pick up her car, um, you know, she made us a cup of tea, big hug, really friendly. She was cool. Um, you know, Aaron Lambo, what a polarizing character he is. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Um, and uh, you know, again, treat people where you find them. And he he came in. He was really polite. He was cool. Paid for his car straight away. Nice. Um, yeah. Um, I wanted to meet Tommy for a long time, Tommy Malik, because mm. what a guy, yeah, what a guy. Amazing. And he's, you know, his, his podcast is one of my favourites mm-hmm. because um, listening to him and, you know, his story and using Towie as an opportunity to start, you know, his footwear company, incredible. Um, so when I met him, I was, I weren't gassed, but I was like, oh, Tommy, do you know yeah. what I mean? That, that was cool. Um, Love Tommy, man. He's, well, Aaron yeah. as well, got so much respect for Aaron, especially yeah. if, his life, where he's came from, yeah. and making any changes, creating a successful but the business. Shit that he gets, he gets it ruthless. So with when it, he, his when stuff. he came on our YouTube channel, we saw a spike, obviously in views when he mm-hmm. promoted it. Um, so that was all his followers coming to coming to us. But you know, all our subscribers, they're fairly nice, polite people, and they said, "Oh, yeah. nice car," you know, fair play to the geezer. When we saw this spike of his followers, oh fucking, oh, look at him fucking showing off again. But and it was a defender. And we got ladders on the side. Oh, do you have to put a ladder on it for him to do it? Is there a booster seat? And I'm like, oh, yeah. fucking horrible people. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? But again, he was, you know, in real life, cool, you know, cool yeah. fella, cool fella. It's mad that, and like, everybody's got that persona. And when you meet people, everybody I meet face to face are always sound. Yeah, yeah. It's, like, it's weird. Like, mm. everybody is good at some degree in their life, or everybody's got goodness everywhere. Yeah. Like, but obviously, people change as they get older. Do you get things. much of it though? Do you get much? I get ninety nine percent love, man. Well, this this is this is what mine has turned into. I never get it anymore because yeah. I've made it more about the cars, and mm-hmm. um, you know, it's it's less about me. And if it is about me, it's not showing off, or it's just showing a little mm-hmm. bit of you know, picture of me and my dog. Who doesn't yeah. like a, a little blue staff? Do you know what I mean? I have when people be slaughtering that this and that. Like every guest is different. Yeah. Like, I've had Tommy Robinson on, John yeah. Adair. See, that was an interesting yeah. listen. Yeah. And people just talking shit. And then, remember, the guests I have on, I don't agree with the guests. I'm just there. Well, we had this conversation about. Yeah, well, we had Which, this conversation about Cobra Tate. I'm an interview. Yeah, that, yeah, we had that conversation about Cobra, yeah. didn't we? Like, that's one of my favourite ones. And I listened to, I, that's, the, that's the only yeah. one I've listened to twice. Mm-hmm. Brilliant. So interesting. You know what he's talking about. But yeah. I can't get, you know, I've met him I met him once at a, mm. at a car event in London, him and his brother, and um, very, very briefly. But the, all the stuff about, you know, the, the COVID and the, yeah. the government power and mm. all that, very, very Spot interesting. On. 
but I couldn't get on board with the, the women the thing. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. And, and, you know, right. you might call me soft, but me and, me and Holly and our relationship are 50-50. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Like, she earns as much as me. Mm-hmm. We put all money on, into the, the thing. Maybe that, you know, in, in his eyes, I should be the main breadwinner mm-hmm. and she should just be the dolly bird sat in the corner saying, yes, no, make my mm-hmm. dinner, you know, stuff like that. Yeah. But that was the only thing I couldn't get on board with. Uh, but someone like him, very, very interesting. But even if I don't agree with some of the things he says, I'm not going to go on there and say, oh, what a fucking prick. Yeah. Uh, just like the majority of stuff he says it was bang on yeah. but there's some religions out there that are allowed five, six, seven mm. wives whatever yeah, it is yeah, yeah, yeah. he just does his thing he believes in it and you know what he fucking runs with it 100% yeah. Yeah. Like there's no yeah. falter with him there's some things I'm well, like that well is, yeah. do I agree with that <laughs> don't because yeah, I know there's yeah. going to be backlash or something yeah. then it made me question me yeah you're still a pussy, James, because <laughs> I'm not 100% giving my own opinion yeah, yeah. of what his beliefs are because mm. I'm thinking, But you well, can't, though. You've, yeah, I've got, splinter, I've got fence, splinters in my arse to sit yeah, on the fence yeah, so yeah, much, yeah. especially, again, because I'm a representative of a brand. Yeah. Whether I agree with something or don't agree with something, you know, I'm not a religious man, you know, and I've got plenty of Muslim mates, I've got Jewish mates, and, you know, and I, I say to them, mm. look, you know... It, if that's if that's good for you, then that's that's cool. It's like you know, I see having kids as like a religion. You know, I've got me, me and Miss have been sixteen years together. We're very very happy. We're prime candidates to have kids, but it just I, it just doesn't bother me. You know, when my mates are like, oh, it's, mate, it's the best thing you'll ever do. You'll have to do it. It's like, well, people say that about Islam, but you know, they tell me that it's the best religion in the world. But I'm not going to turn Muslim. You know, they say it about you know Judaism. I'm not going to turn Jewish. You know, it's the same same thing. I'm yeah. I'm happy being me. I know what I'm about, and 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 that's it but um yeah the, the the religious the religion thing is um yeah that's, but this, everybody's different yeah everybody sees the world different. everybody's it. been raised differently you can sit with a christian a muslim a, however the fuck you're it a product is, of your environment sit them all around the table yeah if we could have a discussion and say how did you get into that belief that's why i always go back to the start yeah because yeah. then it gets a better understanding even with johnny adair yeah he says, if I grew up a mile down the road, I'd been fighting for another cause. Yeah, yeah. They've been raised into conditioning to you're, believe you're a product that of your they think it's normal yeah. life. Like, it's just the way society is. Like, if people can just actually sit and have a discussion without people try to force their beliefs and opinions onto others yeah. I don't like that shit no. but you believe that do you know what good for you but don't force your shit on me because I see the world differently yeah, yeah. I'm not saying to everybody do this do that mm. what I do in my life is to make me feel better and it fucking works for me yeah. it's as natural as it can be without hurting anybody else 100%. which is important because yeah. everything sometimes that you do there's always an element everybody's got an agenda mm. As long as I'm not hurting anyone, this is what I do. This is my belief. Yeah. You either accept me or yeah. just move out. The but same as way. same as Andrew, he's not really hurting anyone with his views. Yeah. It, people might not agree with it, but mm-hmm. he's living. You know, he's living his life, isn't he? I mean, the weekend just gone. He just paid for a roll, like four hundred grand Rolls Royce on his on his debit card. Like, mm-hmm. who does that? Yeah. You know what I mean? But he's, you know, he, he thinks women are a different species. Yeah. <laughs> That's fucked up, man. Yeah, he's he asking me questions <laughs> like, "Did you want a female pilot?" And, and I'm thinking, and, and the thing is, you've got a daughter as well, yeah, so you yeah, was kind yeah. of, you like yeah. holding back, saying, "Hold on a minute." Mm. Like, if my daughter became a pilot, yeah. fucking right, I would let yeah. her fly. Because fly. I'm, I'm trying to understand everyone's beliefs. Now, you look at man, and people say, "Oh, like men are superior, this and that." But men have got shit lives as well. Like the majority of people in prison are men. Mm. The majority of suicide are men. Yeah. Like the majority of people dying of wars pressure. are men. A lot of pressure. Like yeah. There's a lot of, a lot of pressure on mm. men as well. Both species, both mm. genders, play their part in some role, whatever that mm-hmm. is. And everybody's want fifty-fifty balance. Like, so, so be it. We, we do our things. Yeah. That it's right for us and he just went fucking <laughs> through my head like, but he said it yeah, with his chest yeah, which I liked he, 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 he I respected yeah, yeah. that I don't know if I genuinely did there's yeah, just yeah. certain things I'm thinking fuck me do I agree with him here <laughs> because I'm going to get absolutely slaughtered yeah, I just yeah. done, you know what? I'm just going to let him roll with yeah, that yeah, exactly. because I asked him the question would you do the same would, you, would your daughter like that man like yourself to come in and he says yes but part of me I think he's full of shit there like, because I asked him a question what I did pick up on is I asked him the question, have you ever been broken hearted? And that's yeah. when he sat back and he changed his persona. Yeah. So all that as well comes from him being fucking severely screwed over by a girl, in my own opinion. Yeah. Like he's just so guarded with it all. Mm-hmm. Should you have four and five birds? I said, I have, I've had four and five birds <laughs> for many, yeah, many yeah, years yeah, and yeah, I thought yeah. it was normal. Yeah. But it's so much hard work. Mm. So much fucking... Like, to try and make one girl happy <laughs> is hard but yeah. never mind do you know what I'm, yeah see I'm a, I'm a good boy I mean I, uh-huh. you know I got, I got with Holly when she was 18 and I was 21 and, and you know from then I was completely you know I was mm-hmm. I never never did anything you know naughty I, you know completely she 
she was my life and that was it I, you know before then I'd had a few birds but I, even I'd never like had loads of little birds yeah. everywhere one of my mates is chaos he's like and I see he's getting older and older and it's from stress trying to keep three or four different birds happy do you know what I mean but yeah. I just yeah yeah for me the same I'm the same like I just want happy and to be content and keep yeah. pushing it and raising the bar and keep doing what I'm doing like yeah. I want a stress-free life. There's mm. always going to be obstacles. There's yeah, always course. going to be pressure. There's always going to be outside noise for mm. other people's opinions. We're living. Everybody's got an opinion nowadays. But do, you, do, you, do you find that there are a lot of unhappy, a lot of stressed, a lot of angry people? Like yeah. from from looking online and seeing, you know, how people comment and how people yeah. talk to each other and mm-hmm. stuff. There's and YouTube comments and stuff. There's yeah. there's a lot of angry people out there. There's a lot of angry youngsters out mm-hmm. there as well. Of course. I don't know whether that is because they're seeing, you know you know people like me getting to drive a Lambo and stuff it's not even your fucking motor mate why are you mm. stood next to it posing it's like, well, I'm yeah. showing my experiences mm-hmm. do you know what I mean I'm, I'm enjoying it yeah but it's not fucking yours mate yeah. do you know what I mean and that, that jealousy thing do you know what I mean I don't... Course, but they're people pay my wages yeah yeah. Well, I, I, that's why I sit back because whether it's negative or positive they still watch I still make income Yeah, but it's just business for me so that's why I bring in some of the more colourful characters yeah, as course. well because it, it makes sense because people then talk about that. Yeah. Tommy Robinson, people talk about that. Yeah. Half of Glasgow hated me for it and half of, half of them loved me. Like, and I'm thinking, fuck me, it's just an interview. But you're not, but you're Some not... people still post a photo of me and Tommy Robinson doing an interview and they'll think, oh, you've had this guy or I've had fucking murderers yeah. with the same people <laughs> come, in, come in their pants yeah. and go, oh, he's a good guy. <laughs> and I'm thinking, but I had somebody else on it's not yeah. done half the but shit. You're not but push, yeah. you're not pushing yeah. his agenda. Yeah. You're just letting him just tell let his story. Just letting him tell his story the same yeah. as everyone else. Like, yeah. Everybody deserves a chance yeah. to tell their story. Listen, have your opinion, of course. But when, when people go ruthless to the guests, I'm thinking, that's a bit extreme. Yeah, but yeah. everybody has an opinion and yeah. they pay my wages no matter what that's says good. positive, negative. I you get paid income. anyway. I make income. Exactly. Like, exactly. Just, I'm very shrewd. Yeah. I, I, I know my moves and why I'm getting certain guests and why I'm creating stories. It's just by the end of the year, everybody will know who the James English podcast is. They'll all know yeah, because yeah, there'll yeah. be one guest that oh, fuck such and such was on that. They might not watch every single one, no. but there'll be one to go, yeah, I've heard of him. Yeah. And then I go to America, use the same tools and techniques and within three years, I'll be the biggest on the planet. You will. I, I 100% believe you, you will know what be, I mean? mate. Like, I 100% believe you will It's be. not just speaking it into existence. I work harder than everyone mm. else. Manchester last night then d- yourself today. Boxing, I've got a boxing fight set yeah, in October. Yeah. I'm fighting a kid, Rogan O'Connor, X in the beats. That like, people will say, Oh, move your hips when I'm put a post up, move oh. your hips and swing and <laughs> duck down. And, and I'm thinking, Who the fuck are you to tell? <laughs> like, I'm only out there fighting, I'm a I professional know, boxer. I'm getting paid good Mate, though. During lockdown, yeah. I bought myself a punch bag and I was having a little go on it. And yeah. I said, I know a few little moves, yeah, do you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. But even though I'm like, I'll put in the caps, I'll say, Look. I'm no professional. I'm no amateur. I'm literally just doing this for cardio. Let me be. And I'll yeah. still get some fucking two bob got coach yeah. saying, mate, you've got to keep your feet planted. You've got to do this. Do that. I'm like, mate, I'm punching yeah. a bag to get myself out yeah. of breath. Do you know what I mean? If I had a dog, I'd walk it. Do you know mm. what I mean? It's cardio. But people always want to look like a professional and have an opinion yeah. anyway. Every, because every man thinks they can fight. Yeah. I found some a new level of respect for fighters. Look, every man, I can handle myself on the pads, but pads don't hit back. Look, when you're under there, the movement, the technique, the stamina, there's so many oh, different mate. things that fuck well, you me. You see someone do 12 rounds. Unbelievable. Like, how the fuck is that? Unbelievable. Like, big Tyson Fury. Yeah. That's a big man doing yeah. 12 rounds, isn't it? I heard he does 20, 30 rounds sparring. Really? He goes gypsy style. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And pushes the Yeah, boundaries. I mean, I'm, I'm guilty of watching some of those, some of those, like, you know, bare knuckle fights, the, the fair play yeah. fights on YouTube and stuff, and they can mm-hmm. go on for like an hour or two. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. That's what I, do. so where I grew up in Sandy, that was a big, um, there was a big traveller community and I lived a mile down the road from two big sites on the A1 and I went to school with a lot of them and I've always had this like draw to them do you know what I mean I've always got on on mm. really well with them but you've got to respect that with them you know there's a you know there's a bad bunch in every community and every lifestyle but you know I do I do respect that you know they've got a problem they it's you know two yeah. fierce like two fair men and yeah. that's it and they have a go a fair go mm. and I love that of course there's going to be some in who you know yeah. stab each other kick, shoot each other and stuff yeah. like that but I think that's just such a nice way everyone you walk out over a split lip and a black eye but it's shaking hands and it's done yeah those travellers don't fuck about they like, don't, I know mate, so no. many now like, and they're all 100% like, they keep themselves to themselves not yeah. many people get in Yeah, but the ones who I know they're 100% like, say, if I was to have a phone them yeah. man they'd be there in the heartbeat yeah. they love violence though <laughs> They fucking yeah. love it and I'm but thinking, I, as a kid I, I was I was almost scared of them because you, you know 
They again, they had all the designer clothes, they were dripping no. in gold. Do you remember the big goalkeeper rings? And no. I bought one. I bought one off off one. And I had to sellotape like the the back of it so it would fit me in that. But I used, to, oh yeah, that's the, that's the bollocks. But yeah, so growing up growing up in a town where you see them about, I used to get intimidated. But now you understand them. You know, they they, they were sound and yeah. they just they would if you had a if you had an issue, they'd they'd, they'd help you out. Do you know yeah. what I mean? And I've got I've got some good like traveller mates now, and they're again they're, they're brand new and they're yeah. uh, got a lot of respect for that. I just wish. That, you know, when you look at all these stabbings and all these kids getting like in London, like you know, mm. I don't ever wear that. You know, when I'm about, out and about in London, like the, the stabbings and the knife crime that's going on down there. I mean, I'm sure the same up here as yeah. well. It's scary. But is that kids that are, are you know, are they worried? Or what they worry for themselves, and they've got a knife on them, and it's self, you know, it's self defence. Mm-hmm. I don't know. It's just why well, can't they just have a scrap like we used to? Do you know what I mean? Scary, and that's, yeah. Remember the people who do that shit, like the knives and the guns. That's an insecurity thing mm. so but is- you know I um, I used to buy my, my Stone Island gear from a, a shop in North London in um, Wood Green which is quite rough you know and they, they had postcode, postcode wars down there Tottenham and, and Wood Green and and um, I was heading down there one one Saturday and the guy who owned the shop rang me he said don't don't come some kids just being killed outside view cinema like police were, were everywhere and he was like a 15 year old kid and it was just from him being in the wrong place at the wrong time and that just, that's mad to me. We never had to, you know, you had a little scrap, didn't you? You used to have the big boy, you used to bully people and stuff like that, but you never used to have to worry about getting getting killed and stuff. Yeah, and I, that got, going back to kids being angry nowadays, I think there's a lot of kids out there, but then I think, well, you know, if they're growing up in like a, a you know, big tower block, you know, they've got no, you know, it's just their mum, they've got mm. no money, you know, if they can get 1,500 quid from nicking a watch, you know, but they risk you know, two, three years in jail. Jail life is probably better for them there than where, yeah. they're, where they're living. They've got no aspirations. You know, they're not, not mm-hmm. thinking about driving a Lambo at the weekend or anything like that. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a sorry state and I do worry about the future and how that's going to go. Is it just going to get worse? Do you know mm-hmm. what I mean? The the younger generation, they're lost, I, I think. I hope not. I think social media plays a big part, but then again, you've got PlayStations, then again, you've got iPhones, so the majority of stuff on Netflix is crime. Mm. You're constantly watching people getting murdered and drug lords. Normalises it. I watch fucking Pablo Escobar and you uh, must be a gr- you must be in a group mean? chat where you have got that one mate who sends all like the, the like Mexicans getting beheaded yeah, and like cartels yeah, getting yeah, shot. Yeah. You know, members of the cartel get some of the stuff I've seen. Like it's fucked up, oh, man. mate. Yeah, it's horrible. fucked up. I remember. I don't know if it was it was real though, but the guy who took a photo of Maradona and he's coughing and then apparently they were found dead in the bin the next day I know it desensitises you from all of it yeah. but then a lot of it is that you know and I, I watched the uh, the Danny Simpson yeah 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 what yeah. a character he is Danny. but fuck yeah, you, yeah. Funny cat. But, you he know, doesn't give a fuck literally I met him in London apparently people will try to kill him this and that he was just skipping down the road <laughs> zero fucks literally yeah see I, I've got a mate of a mate who knows friend. him and he's, he don't care yeah. he don't care but that and that was interesting how that was stitched together. You know, he showed all that dough, the, the stolen dough, yeah. and then the geezer getting shot in the head who was some like ex-KGB yeah, Russian or something yeah. like that. But on WhatsApp, even I got sent it on one of my group chats, fucking hell, look at this geezer, this dodgy fucking mm-hmm. Danny Simpson guy, stole this geezer's money and now his dad's getting shot in the back of, back yeah. of a car. All stitched together mm-hmm. for a WhatsApp group. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? But then I was like, I need to get this kid on. Yeah. As soon as it comes on. Listen, I've had guys and shit on the show who's had 300,000 views and then I've got Danny Simpson from London who's hitting 400,000 500,000 <laughs> that people can say what they want yeah it's still- but it's a demographic as yeah. well you're, I mean your demographic is probably what like 16 to 30 maybe or Do maybe what, a man, bit it's later. fucking it's about 16 to 75 really it's you've got the full spread over it's 70, 80% it used to be 95% male no, it's been down at seven. Because I was considering no. like loads of people watch Gaza yeah. because it was Gaza, you know, yeah, like yeah, four, yeah. people in their forties and fifties mm-hmm. who looked up to it. But yeah. I'd, I would have thought that you know Danny Simpson's a social media guy. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Like in yeah, I mean even I you know even I followed him. What a character! Yeah, do you yeah, know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. It was just to see what because he's up to next. By that, the, the zero fox given mentality. Yeah, like, part of you just every man wants to have that mentality as well. Mm. Not what you're fucking taking things off people this and that but do you know what fuck it this is me but then he did take a wee break I think he's over in Spain now mm. doing his thing like, because I did say to him on the podcast like, this is all bullshit like, yeah. because there's always somebody bigger than better I know people in Glasgow used to get stabbed for a bit of hash or yeah. a bit of weed yeah. and he's 
doing hundreds of I kind of get it if he was a religious man and he thought that there was a better place to be yeah. after life do you know mm. what I mean if he thought he was going to like yeah. whether he was going to get 50 virgins mm. or if he was going up to heaven you know living <laughs> carelessly like yeah. that but for me I've got too much to lose yeah. do you know what I mean I'm, I, but yeah just like, that level of not giving a fuck I'd like a little bit of it mm. I mean I was like just a little bit nervous driving over here do you know what I mean yeah. for this that geezer like, don't give a fuck about yeah. anything I can imagine uh-huh. that it was just another day out yeah. for him do you know what I mean but people have that opinion like I say I can only judge people for when I meet them and he's a nice guy yeah when it's one on one the camera was yeah. off and we get got yeah. a chat and like a family man does yeah, his thing yeah, yeah. i just don't agree with the the yeah. fucking <laughs> the roller coaster of madness around yeah. it but that's but I've, got, I've got i've yeah. got i have got mates not like to that level i've got mates who don't give a fuck who've yeah. done a bit of like time and you know sold a bit and stuff like that and they're you know that they do live different i worry about everything I do yeah. like for someone who probably comes across on my Instagram as like really confident, a bit of a wide boy. I do. I've got this. I've always got this thing in the back of my head. Like I'm thinking now, like did I park the Lambo straight? Will it be right down in that car park? Yeah. Oh, I've got to get back for this time. And what am I doing tomorrow? You know, I've always got this constant worry about something. But that's just mm-hmm. my that's just my nature. It's, it's it's odd. Do you think you work love, love on your work on your nerves? How about yeah, I think so. I try, you know, and my missus tells me I worry about everything. Everything like. Oh, my, 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 Franco, my, my dog. Oh, he's half hour, forty minutes from eating. Like his dinner, we got back. We got back late. Do you reckon he'll be all right? You know, if I, I'm, I'm always worried about something. Mm-hmm. Always. Who's like that? Your mum and your dad? Um, do you know? What? I remember my my mum when she used to lock the door. She always used to have to check it. Yeah. You know, three times. Um, my dad was always a bit of a. He was a. My dad's a. He's you know he's one of me. He's my best pal. I love my dad's bits. He was a bit of a worrier. But I do, I think I do get it from both parents, but I've got OCD and I, you know, I, I check like the locks in the house and, and the door and stuff like that all the time. And I've got to have everything in a certain place and stuff like that. But everyone's got something, ain't they? And mm. if having OCD and a little bit of worry and a little bit of nerves all the time, I suppose if that's the worst that I've got, and fucking hell, yeah. I'm lucky, ain't I? What, what kind of dog you got? So I've got a little blue staffy. Love Mate. Staffies as well. Do you know what? Yeah. I, I grew up with dogs. My mum and dad have always had, had Jack Russells. My, <clears throat> me, like me, like their, their last one. I think my dad got him free with a Ford Transit. He was a fucking horrible little thing. <laughs> but he's um yeah. I, I grew up with dogs. Um, but Franco's my first dog together. So my wife um during the lockdown she started working from home and now she can continue working from home. So now we were able to get a dog. That's all she ever wanted. Don't want babies. She just wanted a dog. Mm. And we did a lot of research on um, what would be the best breed for us. And, you know, Staffies are, you know, they're fantastic. They're just like good, they're, they're just good starter dogs because they're so chilled. And we found a, a decent breeder. Um, and, yeah, I, I, I love him. You know, I was that guy, though, because I'm very particular and I like my house nice and tidy. He's not coming up in the bedroom. He's not coming up in the bed. Yeah. A couple no, of days later. A couple of days later, I'm, wo- I'm woken yeah, up by yeah. a, like, a snotty nose <laughs> next to my ear, but I wouldn't have it any other way. Yeah. I love him. I love him to bits. I but, the same, man. you know, I've got, I've got, um, you know, I've, I've got this, we've got a three bedroom house, we've got our main bedroom, we've got a little office for Holly, and then, you know, so we've turned a three bedroom house into a one bedroom house, and I've got my dressing room, and I've got all this whole line of clothes that I've, you know, that's my advice. I don't drink, I don't smoke, I love my clobber. But since I've got him, like I say, I wear the same stuff during the week for Urban. And then Saturday, Sunday, I'm wearing the same trackies. We've got we've got a dog slobber down and the same t-shirt and stuff like that because I know that I'm just going to be chilling with him. Yeah. It's nothing better, mate. Like mm-hmm. it, you know, before I got him, it was every weekend. It's like, right, what, what am I doing? What am I driving that car? Am I going to that car show? Where am I going? But now I just want to chill with him. Yeah, my sister's got an American bully, but I have to go over with the same shorts and t-shirt on because I know the fucker just jumps on yeah, his man. Yeah. But you're just going to get bogging, you dirty. I, knew, I mean, I've always always loved dogs, but having your own is completely you know it's completely it's different. fucking hard work as well it is yeah, yeah. it is but do you know what all um, they you know all they offer is love and loyalty mm-hmm. and all you've got to do is feed them and take them for the odd yeah. walk like so my my missus we're into this routine dogs are of routine aren't they so she'll close her laptop she'll finish work at about half five um i leave work at six usually get through the door about half six so for that hour he's waiting my missus sent me so many pictures of him just waiting by the door mm-hmm. he knows that routine though he knows that dad's dad's yeah. coming home in about an hour or so and i pull up on my driveway and i see his little face through the through the window in the door and I'm like, oh my god my heart anyone with anything my dog if you, you need to watch the film hatchy really you need to watch i'm going Will to it make me cry it. Oh, yeah have uh, you ever watched the film up while we're on to films what, 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 pixar up is that about? Is that a, oh, a, 
Is that about a dog? Mate, no, it's about an old man and his but his old man and his wife dies and he, he like mate, I, I you know I like to think myself as a little bit of a geezer. I was yeah. in bits. Pixar yeah. movies, they're not for the kids, mate. They pull on your yeah, emotional soul. Hearts. I think they had a wee film Soul as well. I watched with my daughter at Christmas. Did which you was watch, sad, I watched that last yeah, week? Yeah, even yeah. that, I was like, yeah, it's nice, man. <laughs> that hat, was Rick, Richard Gear, and it's about um, it's a true story. It's about a uh, husky. Oh, mate, fuck me, man. Really? You will, f- if you cry. <laughs> well, now I've got yeah. that love for a yeah, dog, yeah, do you know oh, what I mean? That's, it's a true story, it's powerful, but fuck me, man, I was in bits. Really, I yeah? was in bits, because I used to have a boxer. I don't know, Mongrel, and I had a boxer, and then my sister's got the American Billy. I want to get a couple of Dobermans, yeah. or, um, a couple of German Shepherds. Right now, I'm just too busy, yeah. because I know if I have the dogs, then... I'm not going to work but as they much. A commitment. Yeah, I'm you not know, going to work as much. We couldn't have had him unless yeah. Holly was working from home. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Like we couldn't have done because you know they do take a lot of effort and they do they do need that attention. They yeah. do, he just wants to be around us. Mm-hmm. You know, even if I, like I'm just you know chilling upstairs or something, his paw will be on my foot. He just wants to be next to us. Do you know what I mean? And I've never, yeah, it's lovely. And I, I know, um, like I said earlier, we, we're not that bothered about having kids, but that he's kind of completed our little little family yeah. now. Do you know what I mean? As, as long as you're happy, yeah. that's the main thing. For anybody watching. What's a good investment? Is there any cars that are a good investment that hold their prices, good engines, or that don't break down? Like what? For yeah, the working I mean, it's class cla- person it's, for maybe it's Ben. It's classic cars, and do you yeah. know what? I think you know it depends what kind of money you're looking at. V12 Lamborghinis. If you've got a bit of dough, yeah. V12 Lamborghinis because everything's going electric. Everything's going electric or hybrid. From 2025, I think the Lamborghini range is going to be hybrid or electric. You know, so depending on you know if you've got the money, any V12 Lambo. But you know, if you've got uh, you know money for like a, 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 any other the ford models the rs's the xr's any escort sierra I, I can only see them going one way i love the vogues yeah I've always loved Rover yeah I, like, that, I, I, yeah just... see that's what that's what i wanted for my next car i do i do so many miles though that it's just um yeah they, they just kill the miles but a, a black blacked out range rover that's that yeah. that's the one isn't it you mm-hmm. know what i mean but they unfortunately range rovers you know they're not an investment they're they're something that they're a luxury something that you want and you mm-hmm. know that you might take a little bit of a pill on do you know yeah. what i mean i do worry about the car market at the moment though because um it seems to be touch wood so good and i do worry that it's a false economy you know everything's just going up and up and up and what's going to happen next year because you know we've got the component shortages you know these semiconductors apparently a um a factory in malaysia had burnt down where they make these microchips for things like head up display and sat navs and stuff like that so mm-hmm. Less and less new cars are getting built, which is driving up the price of used car prices. Um, you know, if you if you got a we buy any car quote six months ago, chances are it's probably the same, if not more, on any car across the board. Um, but it depends, really. I mean, cars. You know, if you want them to be an investment, it's got to be something classic, really. Not no. more, not, unless you know you're lucky enough to get limited edition models. You know, uh, which most people aren't. They build them in a limited quantity. Mm. You know, the, most cars are not, aren't really an investment, really. You know, especially if you want to drive them and enjoy yeah. it. Yeah. Do you think cars are going down the electric route? Do you think that'll be in yeah, the next ten I years? Do, old cars I do. Will be electric? And I do. You know, driving that thing today. You know, you've got a V10 <clears throat> behind your head, literally twelve inches behind your head. There's no better feeling. Mm-hmm. And you know, a Tesla could probably outstrip that. You know, a Porsche Taycan, probably like naught to hundred, could probably outstrip that. But there's no drama. There's no popping and banging. Mm-hmm. There's no, you know, drama to it. And um, they're just. Do you know what? I got? I'm struggling to get on board. You know, they're fast milk floats, aren't they? Do you know mm-hmm. what I mean? You know, growing up in the day when you put a, da- a dump valve on your RS Turbo and every time mm-hmm. you change gear, whoosh, mm-hmm. silly noises and stuff, they're the stuff that makes you smile. You know, they're, they're, they're incredible cars. Porsche have done it with a Porsche Taycan because that looks like a Porsche. It looks like a supercar. It looks smart, but it's, it's full electric. But I don't think we've got the infrastructure at the moment. You know, I, I drove up here from um, from Cambridge here, which is about 280 miles. I don't think there's many electric cars on the market that could have done that in one trip. I would have had to have stopped somewhere to charge it up um, until they get a little bit better. But then there's, there's also that argument, are they green? Where's the electric coming from? Mm -hmm. know what i mean there's there's quite a famous picture where there's a um an electric car that's run out of charge that's um there's a a truck a diesel truck towing a generator to charge it up do you know what i mean until we get that infrastructure Mm -hmm. i don't know it is going that way Mm -hmm. we've all got to accept it but as long as there's still a a v12 lambo Mm -hmm. knocking about and they don't get banned fully we should be all right what about bentley jeeps 
Amazing, the Bentagas. You into yeah, them as well, yeah. Been in a couple, man. Yeah, we yeah. we did a kit for the ben, the last Bentley Bentayga, and we couldn't build them quick enough. Mm. They're incredible, mm-hmm. so cool, so much road presence. Do you know what I mean? So, it was always the you know the SVR, the Bentley Bentayga. We do a kit for the G wagon as well, the G sixty three, and the Lamborghini Urus. Now, you know, all four so different. The Bentley Bentayga, you pull up to a golf club somewhere nice. That's a that's a nice mm-hmm. luxury car. The G sixty three is if you want to look like a a gangster, do you know what I mean? That's got so much road presence, you know, that you've got the Russians all blacked out and stuff. The Urus is like a supercar with four doors. Um, and then the Range Rover SVR, value for money, does everything so well. Um, but yeah, the Bentley Bentayga is a, yeah, is a cool thing. What about the G-Wagons? What's your opinion on that? Mate, they, do you know what? They don't drive very nice. Everyone knows yeah. it. And I'll even tell my customers, you know, they I've fucking great. Mate, man, they're they? the bollocks. Yeah. You want to look like a badass. That, that's the mm-hmm. car to have. Do you know what I mean? If mm-hmm. There's, you know, one of my customers, um, he, he's got a very famous, famous plate, GYP5Y Gypsy. And he had a full mm-hmm. wide track G63 with that on the plate. No one's giving you road rage with that on a eh? full yeah. blacked out G sixty three with that number plate. But yeah, they they there if you want to look like a bad yeah. bad geezer. Do you See, know I like Rolls Royces, but I, I'm I'm too young and and maybe once no, I'm late forties, fifties, I'm going to get a roller. Do you know what? I don't think you are now, you know mate. Think so? no, they've they've come right down the average yeah. age of a, cut of a Rolls Royce. Uh-huh. Owner. I seen a Belter there at thirty six grand. It was and it was a fucking <laughs> Belter. <laughs> oh, you must old be the old school. school. No, that was old school. I'm talking. Yeah, yeah, Obviously, yeah. the new ones now. You're talking yeah. to. 200, 200 but I seen it and I was thinking mate a black, and then I was like nah man I've not made it yet I'm, mate. I'm, I'm, I'm borderline <laughs> but I think in my 40s I'm going to have a roller yeah. I visualised uh, like, I believe the Rolls Royce Wraith yeah. which is the two door coupe starlight roof lining yeah. like my, one, of my, one of my stunning. one of my what, top, they, like, top, top three cars so Escort Cosworth yeah. Aventador SVJ no, do you know what? I always do the same. I say top three. It's got to be top five. But the Rolls Royce um, Wraith Black Badge with a starlight roof yeah. lining, like all black on the outside, but a bright orange interior. So, mate, I've had, I've driven the Wraith, the Dawn, the new Cullinan. There's nothing like driving a Rolls Royce and seeing the spirit of ecstasy uh-huh. in front. You know, you just feel like a G. No noise, isn't it? No noise. no noise and that's the that's the other thing yeah. to enjoy cars you don't have to be going fast do you know what I mean yeah. I would have just been happy driving a Rolls Royce I used to think Rolls Royce would maybe you need maybe like a show for stuff I, I not no it. more you not with I mean? like the Dawn and the Wraith where they're two yeah. door and they're for the driver yeah. mate they're so cool and you you know you open the door like it's a suicide door the yeah, door opens yeah, like that yeah 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 mate stop it yeah no I've, I, I, like before you buy anything next when you when you have made it you're ready to buy a car speak to me first whether you buy something for me but or if I'll give you a little bit of advice speak to me first so I ain't having you buy a 35 grand Rolls Royce I've been been hesitant (laughs) to buy a car yeah because I'm always trying to promote everything's within shit and that but then again I'm working I'm like fuck mate you've got and to treat I, and yourself and I want a bit of luxury and this is, this is a conversation like I keep going back to Yanni because he's like, and I know he's, it's not an investment either nah like, so Yanni's the older brother that I always wanted I've got an older sister who I love but we didn't have much of a relationship like she was into I mean she's she you know she's a vegan she does mm-hmm. yoga she works for the BBC she's highly educated we couldn't be any more different I love her she's my sister but I always wanted an older brother Yanni's my older brother so he always gives me advice and stuff and you know I have worked hard and he says there's no point in working hard unless you treat yourself now and again you've got mm-hmm. you know i look down at that and i think i worked hard for that that and that that then that spurs me on to do more if you buy yourself a nice car you'll see you'll look at that you'll see that and you think right i need to continue working hard because i need to pay for it or i need the next mm-hmm. big thing do you know what i mean you've got to treat yourself as well yeah. you have to well, I mean, i've been thinking about it it's it? <laughs> <It's laughs> i'm thinking i just i just know people in glasgow i think scotland's become the number one most there's more billies in Scotland than there is in Europe. Really? It's like one in two. In England, it's one in five. Yeah, I read that last week. I don't know if that's, I'm talking absolute pish, but I think Scotland's up there. So I don't want to be driving about and people think he's forgot himself. I have forgot myself because I wanted you, to. I yeah, didn't like the guy yeah, I was, but yeah, 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 yeah. I feel as if when you start doing well, that... Oh, but ain't that, shame? Yeah, ain't that shame? Yeah, yeah, Because in America, if yeah. you get your new like bench press record, like yeah. you just lifted 140 kg mm. off you, you got geezers called Chad high fiving you. Yeah, 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 man, like yeah. amazing, like that. In in England, like oh, he's obviously on the roids now. Yeah, Do you yeah. know what I mean? It's, but he's selling it, gear there's always an excuse. Yeah, 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 yeah. Pull up in a nice car, like you know, my neighbours don't speak to me really. I live mm. in a, a small, small close. You know, and every every other weekend, you know, like a couple of weekends, got a 380 grand Rolls Royce Cullinan outside my house. Mm. The neighbours just like. Fuck yeah. is he doing now? Do you know what I mean? But they, they haven't asked me. I'd say straight away, I'm a luxury car salesman. You might see these sort of cars on my driveway now and again. Mm-hmm. But 
there's always an excuse. It's, Fucking hell, mate, you look well. You're on the gear. What are you taking? Yeah, 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 yeah. Control? Yeah. What are you doing? Yeah, Do you know what I mean? Yeah. There's, there's always an easy uh-huh. excuse. Fucking hell, you seen Dave's mm-hmm. new motor? You mm-hmm. seen that? He's got a new Range Rover SVR. Yeah, he's selling gear, uh-huh. isn't he? Yeah, I was 15 stone now. I've lost over a stone. He's on the juicer, he's on this, he's on that. I fucking just lost more weight. <laughs> yeah, you watch what you eat, yeah. eat and, and yeah, you exercise. And hard, yeah, yeah, 100%. Yeah, it's always, it's always yeah, the way. Yeah, always the snide comments. It has that, to be, not it? Just what the I think that's a British thing. Yeah. I think it is a British thing. We, we're just negative by nature and it's, it's, mm-hmm. it's, it's a shame, yeah. do you know what I mean? Plans for the future, brother? What's the plans? Tell I'm me. I'm just rolling along. I'm just rolling along. Like, uh-huh. like, so I'll go back to, you know kids message me and saying, how did you get to where you are now? And I don't have the answer because it mm. was just this sequence of events of meeting the right people, getting an Instagram page, you know, networking and, and getting to where I am now. So I've never, I'm not competitive and I've never been like, right, I've got to set myself goals. You know, without sounding corny and cliche, I, tr- I treat every day as it, as it comes, yeah. you know, I, I just keep doing what I'm doing. Mm-hmm. Just, just try and try and be a little bit better every day, you know, just, um, you know, it, it does sound corny, but I'm so happy. I'm, I'm genuinely happy. Like, and, that, and I think that's such a great thing. You know, I'm, I'm, you know, happy. You know, me and my wife are happy. You know, my home life's nice. You know, all, all the people I love, are, you know, touch wood, are, are fit and healthy. Mm-hmm. You know, so I don't really think too much about the about the future, really. Do you know what I mean? I'm, I'm, I think I'm content, which is which is a great thing, yeah. which is which is a good thing. There's always stuff that I want, to, like little things that I want to buy, like you know think about my next car and stuff like that but in terms of the future you know my, my future is out urban and I'm, I'm happy where I am just um yeah maybe just just keep getting bigger and better and just you know I'm not the the Instagram thing is is nice but I don't keep pushing for more followers I've been stuck on 93,000 followers for about you know six months now you know I don't ever push to you know I know that if you do reels and stuff apparently that Instagram push them out and you can you know that that gives you more followers mm-hmm. but I'm not I say I'm not competitive I don't I don't strive to to be the next thing or earn that amount of money or get this biggest house get this nice car and I think that is I think that I am quite lucky in that that I'm quite content do you know what I mean yeah. which is quite a boring answer really but you know no, it, it feels like, like I should be giving answer. feels like I should be giving you more like well I've got this in place I'm going to start this I'm going to I might do this and do that mm. but I'm you know I'm I'm, I'm content yeah. you've never got into the private playing kind industry nah nah and this, this goes back to being you know not competitive in, in my career either. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Like I, I, you know, I couldn't imagine. And I'm a, I'm a soldier. I'm no entrepreneur. Do you know what I mean? I, mm. I need instruction. You know, I've always I've always had a boss. And you know what I want to let like you know, the younger generation know. There's absolutely nothing wrong with working for someone. Do you know what I mean? As long as you're happy and you, as long as you enjoy your job. You know, there's too much on social media, like this fake motivational bullshit that you can be anything and anyone you want. Sometimes you just can't, do you know what I mean? Like, try your best and stuff, but I want to instill a little bit of reality to people. Do you know what I mean? There's a lot of multi-millionaires out there giving advice and giving, you know, this motivational stuff. It's very easy to be motivational mm-hmm. when you're a millionaire already. Yeah. Be motivational when you're you're homeless and you're, you know, you're trying to get there. Do you know mm-hmm. what I mean? But... um yeah, it's, I'm happy where I am. I'm happy yeah, selling cars. I'm happy with Urban. Mm-hmm. I'm happy with my client base. I'm happy with my friend friend group. And yeah, I mean, it's this is this is why I worry about coming onto something like this yeah. because I haven't really got much else to you know to report and say. Do you know what I mean? Not yet, bro. But you've done well today. Like you're a good guy. You're doing your thing. You seem happy. You're just trying to make amends. You're just trying to be good. Not make amends, but you're just trying to be happy as you yeah. can be enjoy life and enjoy your cars and yeah. enjoy your missus like, that's what it's all about yeah. really like, yeah. everybody's story is different bro. there's like, a lot of shit yeah, going yeah. on in the world mate yeah, for, exactly. for, to be this um, to be this content I'm very 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 this lucky this is a beautiful yeah. thing to be mate 100% it's a beautiful thing to be yeah, yeah. would you like to finish up on anything brother I think we're good, mate. No, yeah. I think we're good. No, thanks. Really, thanks for inviting well, me, mate. Boy, absolute <laughs> pleasure, man. Keep nice smashing it, and nice I look forward to seeing you in the future. Thank you, mate. Check out more of my podcasts on the right, and be sure to like, share, and comment your thoughts on this week's podcast. Thank you.